Gold has sold off from its above 2000 highs yet again. And in this video, we're going to be talking about whether or not it's time to buy the metal or if it's time to let go. Is gold still shiny? Let's have a look. So pretty quick, it's easy to see that the 2000 level that we saw earlier this year is no more. We've been in a pretty consistent downward trend and many traders who have been long gold have probably been really frustrated by the sell off. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my take and my breakdown as to why I think that this gold sell off uh, although it's been you know, really tough here, could actually keep going based on the fundamentals. So with that said, let's take a quick look at uh, just again, where we have been over the last few years. From a fundamental perspective, you can see very quickly that we have crested the 2000 mark three different times and each time have seen multiple months following of downward trending markets. Is this going to be a continuous push back down? And are we gonna see levels like 1650 or 1700? Many traders have been thinking we could make a move back down to this 1800 mark. But again, I think looking at only the technicals may lead you a bit astray here. Yes, it is very clear that we do have a major level of resistance around the 2050 mark. I think by combining both the technicals and the fundamentals, we can build a little bit better of a picture as to where gold may be headed next. Let's take a look at the fundamentals. So the first thing we need to understand if we're gonna talk about gold fundamentals is we need to understand if you're newer to this stuff, what actually causes gold to go up? right? If you understand gold, then you need to understand what drives it to new highs. What got us to that all time high three different times and what caused us each time to reject them and is it going to happen again? Again, this 2050 mark that we just got done taking a look at is really key. So the first thing you need to understand about gold is if you're gonna try and understand it fundamentally, you need to understand that what generally drives, drives it higher is fear, and or, and usually at the same time, money printing from central banks. Fear is often, you know, something like people think that the central banks and governments around the world are not capable of solving the problems in front of them. Like for example, what we saw in COVID-19. During COVID-19, gold shot up to the moon. In fact, outperforming the stock market by a wide margin in 2020, which was a really impressive move considering gold is a relatively low percentage moving asset compared to like the NASDAQ or something like that. Other things that can move the markets a lot are presidential elections. And if you haven't heard about this, then, oh my gosh, prepare for that Thanksgiving dinner where it's really awkward and all your you know cousins and uncles and aunts are awkwardly waiting while people are fighting over politics. I got a lot of problems with you people. Anyways, uh, presidential elections can cause gold to move quite a bit as well because people will bet on you know who they think is gonna be the president and whether or not they think that's gonna turn out right for the country or the economy or the global world, etc. These geopolitical events can be huge. Same thing with like, for example, Russia, right? If, uh, for example, we'll, we'll skip down to Ukraine invasion, right? When, when uh, you know, Russia invaded Ukraine, that caused immense global fears for what could happen next. And by the way, those fears materialized heavily in the form of inflation worldwide. Of course, if you're relatively familiar with how the Russian economy works, they're a massive exporter of natural gas and plenty of raw materials that, of course, when taken away from the global markets due to sanctions, prices go up. And if you noticed, the gas pump was pretty devastating during this time. But now, what about now? What about now? These things are kind of I don't want to jinx it, but a lot of them are behind us. They're not current and pressing and devastating to all of us at home. Well, what are the things that could be causing gold to go down? And I liked this picture. Uh, you go to the gas station that says, cost you an arm for regular unleaded and leg for, pre for plus unleaded and both for super unleaded. I thought that picture was really funny. <laughs> Anyways, the point is the current thing that I want to talk about in terms of what could be driving the market high, uh, sorry, lower for gold is of course the Fed. 
Now the Federal Reserve has immense power over the global markets, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Even if you're remotely new to trading, you understand that, you know, that, that, uh, that old dude Jerome Powell has a lot of power in what happens to the stock market. There's like a million memes about the guy printing money, causing the market to go up and then turning off the printer and the market goes back down. It, it has a lot to, to happen there, a lot, a lot of impactful stuff there. Anyways, the Federal Reserve, uh, unlike 2020, where again, gold went up in 2020, right? Went up massively because there was so much money printing and people were fearful that again inflation was going to get out of control well now we see kind of the other the other side of things we see that real interest rates and interest rates have risen dramatically since 2020 and all the stimulus we've had to really see the the central bank here in the united states uh really substantially cut their balance sheet and rate hike substantially in order to you know get down that stubbornness and in inflation well what we're seeing is that the central bank has seen some progress. Uh, the, the major central banks around the world have seen some progress by raising rates, but still there is some inflation stubbornness, which alludes to the idea that interest rates may remain elevated for a prolonged period of time. And what that could mean is it could mean, again, things like bonds, which are generally more attractive during high interest rate periods of times. Because again, if you're a borrower and you go buy a bond and it's offering you 5%, or, or I'm sorry, if you're a lender, right? Right now you can go get a government issued bond for like 5%. And that's risk-free essentially. It's the closest thing you're gonna to get to risk-free in the markets. And that 5% is readily available. So that is kind of an opportunity cost with gold. Why would you buy gold, which doesn't yield anything, when you could just go buy a bond for 5%? Again, you have to remember, a lot of the marketplace that buys gold as sort of a safe haven investment, they also have that option to buy bonds. And this looked way more attractive right now. Right? Interest rates going up can really put pressure on the metal. Again, another thing is recession. You might say, well, wouldn't recession cause gold to go up from fear? Well, kind of, but if it's sort of a moderate recession, it reduces dramatically the, re the demand for raw materials and commodities like gold, silver, uh, natural gas, oil, etc. I just saw this, this was really important to this conversation about the Fed. Fed prepared to raise rates further to combat inflation. Remember what I said about, you know, you could go get a bond for 5% and it's basically risk-free? Well, if they keep raising rates and this 5% bond is now 5.5%, that makes gold even less attractive because now you could just go get a bond for 5.5% if you're trying to be risk adverse, right? So the point is the opportunity cost of buying gold becomes uh, much, it's much better just to buy other things rather than buy gold. But if again, in the opposite case, gold becomes a bit more attractive. Anyways, that's not what we see right now. We see the US Federal Reserve may need to implement additional interest rate hikes in order to effectively manage inflation, according to Fed Jerome Powell, uh, Fed Chair. Uh, however, he has also suggested the Fed could hold rates steady at its next meeting in September as officials assess the incoming data in the evolving outlooks and risks. The point is, we've recently seen the Federal Reserve be really uh, sort of hawkish again, and that hawkishness is again strong for the dollar and a strong dollar puts a lot of pressure on gold. What else puts a lot of pressure on gold? Well, here's the other thing I wanted to say. Remember when I talked about raw materials and commodities? Well, we've got some big players going on over in China. And recently we've seen some substantial slowdown in the Chinese economy. Take a look at this. The Chinese economy indicators tumble in prolonged lockdowns. Year over year change in monthly Chinese retail sales and Chinese industrial production in percent have declined. So clearly some decline in China. How is that gonna impact gold? Well, China is a major exporter. Have you ever noticed that when you go to the store, everything is made in China? Well, how do they make everything? Well, they demand massive quantities of commodities. Of course, using a massive amount of oil and gas and well, silver to create things like solar panels or uh, you know airplanes, silver isn't everything. Well, gold also is in a lot of things and also 
A slowdown in the economy may reduce, you know, uh, luxurious spending in the form of jewelry, which is, of course, gold as well, right? So the point is, this might be contagious. Some slowdown in China uh, could be fearful. Uh, and again, that is why many people are afraid of potential recession, which could slow down demand dramatically for the commodity of gold and silver. So again, this video is kind of gold and silver related. Anyways, I wanted to do a side note here. Australia. Think about this for a second. If you're watching, if you're a currency trader, I know a lot of my viewers, of course, are FX traders. Well, Australia relies heavily on the Chinese economy. And if the Chinese economy is slowing down, it may be worth noting that a weakening Chinese economy could impact the strength of the Australian dollar. If you'll notice the AUD pairs, if you're an FX person, the Australian dollar currency pairs have been really taking a beating off of all of this. And it does look like in the short term that it could be likely to continue. Maybe I'll make another video about this. If you do want me to make more videos about this, if you like this new format I'm trying, these videos are obviously, these are a lot of work to make. But if you guys really like them, do me a quick favor and comment down below, make more of these. And maybe I'll make some more of this type of content if you guys appreciate it. So I wanted to also take a second to look at big money. It's a very telling indicator, and if you haven't started looking at the commitment of traders data, I highly recommend it. It allows you to take a look essentially at what smart money, big money, banks, Wall Street, etc., what they're buying. So we're gonna focus heavily on what smart money has been doing recently to really get an idea as to where sentiment is going with the smartest players on the markets. Let's take a look. Okay, so I've pulled up the edge finder here and we're taking a look at the commitment of traders data. Now, what you'll notice is that gold is pretty heftily long biased in terms of what institutional trader positioning looks like. 64.5% of positioning is long. So you might say, well, Nick, they're buying this dip as the market goes down, maybe we should be buying gold. Well, hold your horses for a second and let's take a look at this second uh, column or the second section of the, the page here, which is really important. This columns uh, or this table that you're looking at is the commitment of traders data breaking down, broken down into a table. And it shows, for example, the most recent change. So how have things changed week to week? Because of course, if you're not familiar with COT, it's a week to week performance uh, or week to week uh, report that's put out. Well, we get an idea every week and let's isolate gold here for a second and see where things are at. You can see that there are in terms of futures contracts, which is what this is tracking, there's more long contracts open in the most recent filing than there is short, but notice something very specific. The number of long contracts decreased by 6,738. Six, 6, That's a lot of long positions being closed. And look at the short contracts. There was an additional 12,452 short contracts opened on the markets. Now, you'll say, you might say, well, this is still long overall for gold. The overall positions are still long. And that may be true, but I wanna show you another chart. If we scroll down here, you can see how we've looked not just this past week, but over several weeks, you can see that the blue line shows the overall uh, positioning of gold. And you can see that it is it has come down a lot since earlier this year. So it does seem like sentiment is shifting from bullish to bearish in terms of what institutional traders are doing with the metal. Now that we've had a look at what institutional money is doing, what about the crowd? Is the crowd buying the gold market dip recently or are they selling it too? Well, the crowd can be really important to look at. The contrarian indicator that it generates can oftentimes be really powerful. I generally look at it this way. If retail is really long, I generally wanna go short. If retail is really short, I look to go long. So let's have a look and see what retail's at. Well, and what do you know? Retail traders are 64%, at least according to the sample size that we have, which is a couple different brokerages, 64% long and 36% short. Clearly, the amateur traders are favoring the idea of buying gold recently, whereas institutional money has been increasingly getting short. And really interesting. So you may be wondering where I just got all of that data. And I just want to say this is a plug. Our sponsor, quote unquote, is of course, 
our own product here at A1 Trading. I run a software company that builds tools for traders. And if you would like access to that data, it's currently 30% off using the link and promo code down below in the description. If you punch in the code YTVIP, you'll get 30% off. But if you message us, you can actually get 35% off if you message someone on our support team during this video, we will be doing a short term uh, sale on the product. So if you are interested in getting 35% off of our software, if you've been watching the channel for a while and you'd like to get a copy, take advantage by messing, uh, messaging us down below in the description. There will be a direct link to our website where you can chat with someone on my team. So now I wanna get back on the technical side for a moment and see if we can find any trading setups that may be a little bit more pressing now that you can kind of see I've revealed myself, I'm a little bit short biased on the market of gold. So now that we're looking at the chart, it's pretty clear, like I said, that we've tagged a yet again this 2050 mark and seen a lot of rejection coming off of this area. And I wanna actually zoom in a little bit more than the weekly chart. We're gonna drop it down to the four hour chart. And the four hour chart is something I think is really interesting. Now, what you'll notice is that recently we had a really nice downward trend on the four hour and one hour chart, which I actually took a big, uh, you know, a big part of. I actually shorted gold several times and uh, essentially saw this thing continue to move lower, which was awesome. I made some good money. And then when I shorted it here, I actually ended up taking a loss as it broke through the highs. But all things considered, I shorted it several times on lower time frames, and I was able to make a pretty good profit overall. The question is now, is it time to sell it again now that it's run up a little bit? Well, in my opinion, this is just how personally I will be looking to trade gold. I'm looking for breakouts back down. So again, I'm now looking at the four hour chart. If we do start to see price break through support levels and enter into another downward trend potentially, I like the idea of looking for trade setups like this. A break of like 1910 could be an opportunity to start looking for this overall downward trend to resume and kind of get back into play. But recently we've had a little bit of an upswing in the market here for gold. So again, like I said, I would like to see a failure of supportive structure before looking to potentially short a breakout and retest. So that's my opinion. I do think we have potential to see gold go back to 1885. And you may ask, well, Nick, why not just short it where it currently is? Well, yes, I'm using fundamentals, but I do like to also incorporate technicals to my trading. So I'd be looking for a breakout here possible retests, and then looking to short with a proper risk reward. It's not quite at a point I'm ready to short. I'd like to see this market kind of form this, this nice downward channel again before I look to get involved. But again, uh, I would not be taking shorts just because it is you know fundamentally short because again, this thing could fly through the highs for a while and keep going up. I'm gonna start waking, waiting for a series of lower highs and lower lows before I ultimately look to try and short this market again. If you'd like to see the trades that I am taking anytime I take them, I do actually offer for that as a service within our Discord community, which will also be linked down below in the description. And I should also mention that there are some free components to the Discord as well, where you can get daily ideas from myself and my trading colleagues here at A1 Trading. If you would like to take advantage of that, click the links down below in the description. And remember, you can also get access to our software for 30 to 35% off if you message us down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching. If you're looking to improve as a trader, we've got some cool free resources here that I wanted to share as we close today's video. Down below in the description, there is a link to join our Discord channel or our Telegram channel. And we also have our website, a1trading.com, where traders can get access to free course material to help you improve as a trader. Remember, we are also live Monday through Friday on this channel around 9.30 a.m. US Eastern, broadcasting most live news events and that sort of thing. So hope to see you there. And also, we do have a couple videos videos here showing up on the screen. If either of these seems like it might be helpful to you, then make sure to click here or here and we'll see you there.